Shalom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom, meaning peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. I want to go into this, which is the seed coming from the man. It probably won't be too long, but just, you know, based off. Yeah, I imagine a lot of brothers are going to go into this based on you know, um, so called Elder Kona. But anyway, 1 Kings 14 and 21. Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Right, so he's the king over Judah. Right, Solomon was obviously the, the son of King David. King David. Oh, I just thought of another one. Yeah, Ruth the Moabitess. Anyway. First Kings 14 and 21, and Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign. It was AK 41. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem. The city which Yahweh did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonitus. Right, so this guy was king. Sorry, this, yeah, this brother, this king. Ruled over Judah, right? Which he had after First Kings eleven, which isn't too far away. So we'll prove it. You know, the kingdom was rent from Solomon. Why? Because he he started worshiping. Excuse me. He started worshiping the gods of the women he was dealing with, because Solomon had a lot of women. Right, 700, 700 wives and 300 concubines. So 1 Kings 11 and 7. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, you know, an idol, and you click on it. Kamawash, so it's Chimos, Subduer. The main deity, which one does that mean? An idol. The main idol of the Moabites and the god of the Ammonites. Also identified with Baal Peor, which I believe that goes back to the Midianites, if I'm not mistaken, and that's where they got, you know, one of the Jakes got thrust through. Let's fact check that. Baal Zebub. Yeah, it goes into Lord of the Flies. That's why you have that book, Lord of the Flies. If you've ever heard of that. Let's see, man. Numbers 25 and 4. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord Yahweh against the sun. That the fierce anger of Yahweh may be turned away from Israel. Which that seems severe. Verse 5. But, you know, why? For example, we went into slavery because of idolatry. You know, there's certain laws that seem severe. But the wages of sin are death, and the wages of the transgression of the law. And when I say seem severe, I mean to us in a in a westernized state of mind. You know, even us that are waking up to the truth, if we were to see these things happen on the earth, you know, it's different to just reading about it. Numbers 25 and 5, And Moses said unto the judges of Yasharala, Slay ye every one of his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. Verse 6, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, which is one of the sons of Aaron, <laughs> sorry, it says that there, and when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, so obviously he's a Levite, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel and then into the tent, and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Now, you know, people will go to certain examples like this. 
and try and say, see, yeah, so we're not meant to deal with women of other nations. But the main thing is what? The idolatry. Not even the main thing, that is the problem. Even in the law when it tells you you're not allowed to marry certain nations, Deuteronomy 7, that is. The seven Canaanite nations, greater and mightier than thou. It tells you because, yeah, your heart will cleave unto their God. Right, so you'll commit idolatry, which that's where the sin is. For sin is transgression of the law. So whereabouts were we? We're looking at this definition. Come and wash. So with uh, the national deity of the Moabites and the good of the Ammonites, also identified with Baal Peor, but Al Zabub, which I believe that'll go back to the Canaanites. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Mars, which is a way you get the term March, as in the month in the Gregorian calendar. And Saturn, you know, which is where you get the term Saturday in the Gregorian calendar. Which really shows you ease your way of thinking and dealing with So look here, dealing with your naming and governing is all in you know, an idolatry, man. And then the second definition under A is worship of this God was introduced into Jerusalem by Solomon. It says, and abolished by King Josiah of Judah. So verse 7 again of First Kings 11. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination Moab, in the hill that is before, before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burn incense and sacrifice unto their gods. Yeah, and like I said, he had a lot of women, and a lot of strange women. So he was worshipping all different manners of idols. Uh, Damne won, uh, won for one idol per day of the year yeah, on some <laughs> on some Muslim shit anyway so we've dealt with that so, so that was Solomon yeah he went off due to his idolatry and through you know the the um, verse 21 through this you know he had it not, not through the idolatry of course but through you know, having that wife, he had a child to that wife, who was an Ammonitess, which is a heathen nation, a non-Israelite nation. And his son, Solomon's son, so therefore King David's grandson, was then king of the southern kingdom. That was it. I was talking about the kingdom split. Because before that you had the whole of... Yeah, so we'll just carry on from verse 8. And likewise he did for all his strange wives which burn incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And the Lord Yahweh was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from Yahweh, power of Yasharala, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept that not, but he kept not that which Yahweh commanded, Wherefore Yahweh said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done unto thee, sorry, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Okay. So you see, because yeah, David, his heart was perfect with the Heavenly Father. He wasn't going to take the kingdom from Solomon for the sake of David. Now, just like the Lord's not going to destroy, or, well, is not and wasn't going to destroy the whole nation of Israel for the sake of the men Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You know, certain mercy we get due to who we descend from. You know, call it um, Israelite privilege. Yeah, because really the Lord was wanting to destroy us. 
I believe that's in Exodus 32. Yeah, and Moses had to plead, plead with the Heavenly Father and basically say, yeah, you've made a promise, please keep it. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yeah, I think that's where he says, yeah, we've come out of Egypt and the heathen are basically going to laugh at us. You know, mock us. So, yeah, the Lord didn't destroy us for that sake, just as he didn't cast it out from under Solomon for the sake of David, his father. Yeah, he didn't completely kill us off for Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, our fathers. Yeah, I've read that, but I'll read it again. First Kings 14 and 21, And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem. The city which Jehovah did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there, and his mother's name, Rehoboam's mother's name, was Naamah the Ammonitess. See, so it's the, the Ammonite wife of Solomon and mother of King Rehoboam of Judah. Just look at the word Ammonitus as well. See, Ammon tribal, a woman of Ammon. Okay, so she was a heathen. Ruth chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab he and his wife and his two sons and the name of the man was Elimelech and, his name of the, and the name of his wife was Naomi and the name of his two sons Marlon and Chilion Ephrathites of Bethlehem Judah and they came into the country of Moab and continued there and Elimelech's and Elimelech Naomi's husband died and she was left with the two sons and they took them wives of the women of Moab the one of the name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other was Ruth and they dwelled there about 10 years all right Where's it going to say? Bear with me. So Ruth 1 and 22. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess had daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem Judah in the beginning of barley harvest. There it is. Beautiful. Ruth 2 and 1. And Naomi had a kinsman, a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him. So okay. Glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came, and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her, her hap was to lie on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was a kindred of Elimelech. I'm going to end up reading the whole chapter here. So I
There it is. Right at the end. So lucky I've not been over this in a while. Ruth 4 and 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord Yahweh gave her conception and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be Yahweh, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Okay. And I'll skip down to verse 17. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying there's a, a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Right? So his, his mother's a uh, uh, Moabite. His father's a Jake. So you have some that will say, oh, that's a Mamza. When really he's an Israelite. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. A bastard or Mamazar. Mamazar, Mamazar. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. So imagine you've already got. So you've got. Let's, let's go to the lineage actually. Uh, Obed. Put on. Wand. So Matthew 1 and 1 The book of the generation of Yahweh Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So Isaac begat uh, sorry, uh, Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas or Judah and his brethren, and Judah begat Pharaoh and Zara of Thamar, and Pharaoh begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Naasan, and Naasan begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. Right, so that, oh, my bad, I forgot to go into the definition for this word. So what it really means is if you have a heathen father and an Israelite mother. Right, so it says bastard, child of incest, illegitimate child, bastard, mixed population of fig. Now it says here, <clears throat> born of a Jewish father and a heathen mother or vice versa. Now that's not true. Because we can see many examples of Israelites having children. Yes, yeah, so Jews or Israelites of other tribes having children with heathen women and those children being Israelites. You're not being put, you know, being you know, exiled from the congregation and stuff. And a lot of the times that the women or the children, you know, were you know, put away was due to idolatry. You know, because they were, they were growing up as Gentiles, you know, meaning they were doing the Gentile customs. So two scriptures before we go back to the lineage now. Genesis 1. Or maybe three scriptures. Genesis 1. Verse 11. And Allah said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind. Right, so the, the seed is, is a masculine thing. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and Alahim saw that it was good. It says Romans 1 and 3. Concerning his son Hamashiach Yahushai, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. We go into this word for seed of David. It's the Greek word sperma. Now I don't need to tell you what English word that goes to. But it says from which a plant germinates. Because we just looked, you know, it's a masculine principle, if you like, or a masculine idea or concept, the idea of a seed. The seed, i.e. grain or kernel, which contains within itself the germ of the future plants. And that's, that's what the, you know, the sperm does. It contains all the, 
the lineage, man. So uh, the semen virile, the product of the semen, seed, children, offspring, progeny. Yeah, you've got guys like Hebrew E, they will sort of bug themselves out. See the word seed, like it talks about the woman's seed. When it talks about a woman, specifically Genesis 3, woman's seed, it's talking about a woman's children, offspring, or progeny. Because a woman doesn't have sperm. Now let's get... Nehemiah, I think it's chapter 7, Nehemiah 7 and 61, and these were they which went up also from Talmalai, Talharesha, Cherub, Adan, and Aimeh, but they could not shew their father's house nor their seed, whether they were of Israel, right, because it goes back to your father, your father's house you and, and he, the seed, because the seed comes from the father, like it says, Numbers 1 and 18, and they assembled themselves, sorry, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their families, and they, sorry, they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upwards by their poles. Now we'll go back to the lineage, Matthew 1, and go back to verse 5. And Simon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. <laughs> you know, it's all there, man. And Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urias, which is Uriah. So it's, uh, there's so many, yeah, just in this, there's so many, yeah, you can point out, yeah, well, they had a heathen woman, they had a heathen woman. Look, look verse 7, and Solomon begat Re, um, Reboam, which is Rehoboam, right, who was his mother? We just went to it. His, mama, his mother was Naama, the Ammonitus. So, so what does it say about a bastard? A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Right, so how much more would he not be king? Yeah, but you have a line of kings. This is even in the lineage of the king of all kings. Now it doesn't say even to the tenth generation. Then in the, then in the eleventh generation they can come on in. It doesn't say that it says even. I mean, indeed. You know, forever. That's what it says in the next verse about the Moabites, the Ammonites. You know, so if these guys were Mamzers or these guys were Ammonites, yeah, they wouldn't be coming coming up around us, man. They'd be put away. And, you know, the whole the whole tribes came through. You know, Jacob didn't take his own daughter to be, you know, Jacob out an Israelite woman to wife. So then what are all the tribes Mamzers? You have different because this doctrine's been around for a while. You have different guys. Oh, that's before the law. You, it was only after. Once you had 12 tribes, then you know, the Mamza thing comes into play. Yeah, and which none of all this is in the scriptures. Yeah, they, have to, they have to juggle about a bit to try and make it fit. But, you know, that was it. Prayer was edifying. Next video, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Rukha Kudash. Shalom.